We've had a quick review on switching in a simple network, but as networks grow and become more complex, we usually need to divide it up into logical parts. We do this by configuring a VLAN. VLANs create one or more logical networks on a physical switch. It's kind of like dividing a switch into a few smaller switches. Some ports can be part of one VLAN, other ports can be in a different VLAN, and they can both be separate from each other. There are a few reasons we might want to do this. The obvious one is to separate some traffic from some other traffic. This could be for security, or perhaps we have multiple customers that we need to keep separated. We might use VLANs to group certain traffic together. For example, we would create a VLAN just for voice traffic, that is phone calls. This makes it easier to give this traffic a higher priority than other traffic. Or we could group devices into VLANs. It's quite common to put servers in one VLAN, printers in another, and PCs in yet another VLAN. This is often done so we can put a firewall between these VLANs and apply security policies between them. We'll take a look at security policies more in a later section of this series. Think about broadcast domains. As we know, broadcasts are limited to the local network. Each VLAN is considered to be a different network, so creating VLANs creates smaller broadcast domains. There are many different reasons we might want to use VLANs. Don't worry too much about listing them all out. As you gain experience, you will start to appreciate their value and when to use them. For now, we're just going to focus on how they work and how they're configured. In the Switches CLI, we're going to create three VLANs with IDs 10, 20, and 30. This is as simple as typing VLAN and the VLAN ID. We can optionally give each one a name. I recommend this as it makes it easier to see what each VLAN is for later on. If you're not yet familiar with Cisco's command line interface, I have a video on that to help you get started. See the description for a link. We can have up to 4,094 VLANs on a switch. Of course, it would be rare to need that many. We only need three for now, which are for workstations, servers, and printers. When we're done, we can check out the VLANs that we've created with Show VLAN Brief. You can see the three VLANs that were created and a few others. For example, Cisco reserve four VLANs for special use. We can't move or change these. It's interesting to know that historically, Cisco broke the VLAN range into two smaller ranges. VLANs 1 to 1001 were known as the normal range, while VLANs 1006 to 4094 were called the extended range. Keep in mind that this is just a Cisco thing. Other vendors don't do this. The other VLAN that we didn't create is VLAN 1, which is the default VLAN. Until we make any changes, all ports are members of this VLAN. We'll talk a bit more about this one later. So I hope this is all making sense so far. Here are two more questions to help you think about it and to challenge your understanding. 